Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Badgers Basketball Battlestar Galactica. The Badgers season is officially over after a disappointing loss to North Texas in the NIT Final Four. However, we have a kind of a long episode here. Got a lot to get through. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you find it meaningful and a lot of kind of interesting information to set us up for next season. To start things off, as a reminder, as always, we are on Google and Spotify pad- podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Badgers Basketball BG for both Twitter and YouTube. And again, any followers, subscriptions, et cetera, is greatly appreciated. So with that said, our usual let a player pick dinner. We're not going to do that this week. The last game was kind of a bummer. So I'm going to say we're not getting dinner. Got No, we're not going to get dinner for this show. Okay. And with the season officially over, I'm going to do like a postseason grades or postseason reflection for this team and kind of the guys individually. The first goal as a team, and I think the question I want to pose is what were the common themes for the team this year? Right. Obviously, this season was not what we had hoped for, especially after the start. So what were the things that kind of kept coming up again and again and again that could be or should be addressed, you know, after after this season? The excuse me, the first First thing I would say, I feel like I said this almost every podcast, is the inconsistency. And it goes both ways because there were games where we looked fantastic in plenty of aspects of the game. Defensively, offensively, shooting, finishing, post play. Like, it looked great. You know, I mean, the end of the season, we all of a sudden we're hitting our free throws and it's like, what's going on? You know, our biggest game of the season, hosting Purdue, we shot almost four. We shot, I think it was 41.7% from three. You know, we had games where, like our home game against Michigan and Iowa were defensively, we just set the tone and, and won the game, right? And we had some games where teams could not stop us in the post and other games we, we couldn't, you know, finish a closer shot to save our life. So I think the consistency has got to get better. And now part of that is kind of related is we had a very thin bench this year. You know, at the end of the day, you know, that didn't help the, the inconsistency. We, we essentially had five guys that played meaningful minutes and could score for us, you know, and that's not to disrespect, you know, Jordan Davis, Carter Gilmore and Kamari McGee is unfortunately the, the presence we got off the bench wasn't something we could always count on, you know? And I looked, I looked, I would look this up a bit before the the podcast episode tonight and all five guys from Wisconsin averaged over 30 minutes per game in big 10 play. And four of the five averaged 30 minutes, over 30 minutes a game for the entire season. Connor was just under 28 games average for the whole season, but he was over 30 minutes a game in Big Ten play. Okay. And out of curiosity, I asked myself, is that unique to Wisconsin? Like, is that something that is that is common? And no, it's not. Um, only two other teams averaged four guys in the 30s for the whole season. That was Michigan and Rutgers, and they were also with us in the NIT. One thing that was unique about Wisconsin, though, is both those guys, excuse me, both those teams had three guys average 20 minutes per game. And they would have another player or two kind of in the high teens where Wisconsin had Connor at, what was it, 27.8, 27.7, whatever it was. Uh, Jordan Davis was just a hair above 20, Carter Gilmore a bit below 20. And then after that, it, it you know, McGee dropped a bit. So it was a very top heavy in the rotation. And you could see that, like, the guys I think were kind of exhausted the last, especially the last 10 games of the season, right? They were just, they were scraping the barrel, so to speak. Okay. And then the, the last theme I said, and this wasn't necessarily what we saw like in, in the games, but at the same time we did, I guess you could say, but it's pick your recruiting, you know, those are also related to the other two. Like we had, because I think some of our recruiting has been picky lately or overly picky. I'll get to more specifics of that later. We had a thin bench because we had a thin bench. It didn't help with the consistency. So, like, I think all three of these kind of themes tied into each other in in some in some way. And for this picky recruiting thing, I I did ask myself, like, is there a list of guys I could I could go through to kind of show, like, oh, these would be the people I would want. And I don't know if that's if that's fair because there might be a player that definitely could have helped Wisconsin right off the bat, but maybe Greg Gard and the coaching staff they kind of you know, through recruiting this player was like, this is be a terrible thing for our, for our culture. We can't do this. So I'm never about to complain with that. What I will say is I think there's a handful of players, or I know, we all know, there's a handful of players in the transfer portal who are like originally from Wisconsin, didn't go to Wisconsin, 
And I think now there are some Wisconsin fans that are saying, well, why don't we get them out of high school? This is ridiculous. And I would just like to offer a prompt or question to think about, would you have wanted Wisconsin to offer a guy who coming out of high school was not a high major, was not a big 10 player. You know, they were very good at the mid major, but they needed time to get good. They needed time developing against lesser talent, less physical talent, less athleticism to kind of become the players they are. Like if we offered all those guys out of high school and they were taking up roster spots, A, they wouldn't have developed what they did because they wouldn't get the playing time. And B, we would have been upset that we, you know, we didn't get, you know, better players regardless. So I think it's kind of a lose lose for for Greg Garden for Wisconsin. But theme still existed. And the last one, this is, this is more positive, is I think the culture and the team playing together was, I don't think they ever got lost this season. And some people might not think that's a big deal. I think it's huge because there are so many times this year where I think Wisconsin could have just kind of fell apart. You know, I, I looked it up and we lost nine games by four or fewer points or in overtime, nine times. Seven of those were in Big Ten play, right? So we take... We take three of those. We're second in the Big Ten. You know, it's it's again, it's not healthy to think about that. But as while this was disappointing, we were so close. And then, like I just said, like it could have been so easy for the players to point fingers. Like how how easy could it have been for the players to stop supporting each other, not playing together, or for coaches to kind of lose their patience, right? I I, I just think whether it's for me being at games, seeing people comment on Twitter, various like basketball forums i've seen and you know and heard what some quote-unquote fans think the coaches should do or say to these players like make them play better and i just want like trust me if we would have done what some of these people say we should have like if we would have taken last place in the big 10 it would have been an absolute you know disaster so i I think the coaches and players deserve some credit there and you know just shout out shout out to that locker room so at the end of the day what's the grade I'm going to go with a C. I thought about like a CD, but I decided C because had this tournament, had this team made the tournament, it would have been a very good season based on preseason expectations. If you take those expectations after the 11 and two start, maybe would have been viewed as like a quote, least acceptable option. However, still like, Hey, we made the tournament, you know, and I mentioned earlier, this team was three big 10 wins away from potentially taking third place in the big 10. Okay. And depending on like, there's a couple of games to look at that were probably the closest. You could take a couple of games. You say, Hey, make, instead of going, what was it? Five for 11 from the free throw line or four for 11 from the free throw line, go seven for 11 free throw line. And for two other games where we shot like less than 40% from the field, make one more layup, layup each game. And that's a win. So it's disappointing, but I think we were closer to having a season. We would have been pretty proud of than what a lot of people give Wisconsin credit for. So not a great grade, probably a low C, but a C. And now for kind of individual players, I I didn't want to give a grade for each player just because my thought was, you know, there are different, there's a different set of standards and expectations for different players. So I don't know if it would be fair for me to give a grade for one player who had a much lesser role than another or kind of vice versa. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give one positive for each player, one area I think needs improvement, and then one question or prompt I would give for each player to kind of say or kind of springboard, like, what what could next season look like, okay? So start things off, I'm just going to write down the roster from center down to the uh, down to the bench player. So for Stephen Crowell, excuse me, I think his, his post player or touch finishing around the hoop was much improved this year. So that's my big positive for him. There are some games where he looked fantastic down there. One thing I think needs improvement is his three-point shooting. And it doesn't have to get that much better. I think for the season, he finished just a hair over 30%. If he could shoot even 33%, kind of like if that's like that minimum acceptable percentage, 33% with a little bit of higher with a little bit of a higher usage rate, that would do wonders for our offensive spacing because now players can't sag, they got to close out faster. So that would be what I'd want him to improve. And then my, my question is, can can Big Steve be Big Steve more often? In other words, can he be more consistent? Because we, we don't need Big Steve from the from the uh, Bradley game to happen every night. Heck, we don't even need that full, you know, outburst to happen every night. 
but a big Steve can be, you know, a, a force down low unless teams do something about it and just have the confidence to hit a couple threes if he's left open. Like that's now all of a sudden a huge difference for our Dolphins. Tyler Wall. I'm impressed with his willingness to want to be and to like put in the effort to be the quote, the guy this year. You know, I think there was some like that Kansas game. He kind of took control of that game and kind of led that comeback. You know, I thought he had some, some big plays and big games against the Mark in the Marquette game, both against Iowa and Maryland, those early season wins. Now, granted his improvement, I think part of this is tied to the injury, but I mean, you got to finish better. If that high of a percentage of your shots are coming that close to the rim, it's, it's got to be a higher percentage, which I, I, I do believe he can. And it is part of that is some of the injury, but at the same time, if you're playing, you know, you, you got to hold yourself to high standard. And the question for Wall is, is he going to come back for fifth year? You know, is he coming back? For Max Klesman, I loved his consistency in the level of play. I think he can improve in the consistency in the style of play. Specifically, can we see a more aggressive and attacking Max Klesman more often? Okay. Because I believe the latter can improve. But my question is how much can the former with a full season in UW's strength and conditioning program, like how much can that improve? For Connor Asesian, obviously his shooting and just offense in general was fantastic. And an area for improvement, I think, would be the physicality on defense. Although I, I do think it is needed to say he was much better than anticipated or advertised as a defensive recruit, and he did improve throughout the season. So I think he deserves that. And then my question is, how will his game evolve with now the whole country knowing his ability to shoot and score? Because, I mean, we saw every team had him marked at the end of the season. He kind of he started a little bit. So how is that going to grow Grow for him? For Chucky Hepburn, I got shooting because I thought he would improve from three. I did not think he would improve at the rate that it did. And one thing that I think can improve is his ability to finish or attack. Cause I think, and this, this could be a whole conversation in itself. I love it when Chucky Hepburn is aggressive and attacking and I wish he would finish more. I also think part of that is needing a little help from his teammates, but that's still, I would say this is the place he can improve the most. And for my question for Chucky, you know, as I mentioned, I was really impressed with his improvements from year one to year two. And I'm curious can we see an improvement in his two-point finishing or even another improvement in his three-point shooting? Like that could be a huge difference for Chucky Hepburn. He's already done a great job there. All right. On to our, our bench players, uh, Carter Gilmore. This one was actually kind of, kind of simple. I was really impressed with his defense this year. I think his offense in general can improve. And I'm just, I want to know what is, what, what, what can we get out of Carter Gilmore on the offensive end? Because he was an offensive threat in high school, and I understand he's not going to be that at the college level. But there, the skill's there, so I'm wondering what, what can we get from Carter? For Isaac Lindsay, his shooting and fearlessness to shoot impressing this year. That was, that was much needed in his Vanessa off the bench. One thing I think can improve is his physicality. Now, part of that can only get you so far. So I think, you know, obviously weight room is going to help. But my question for him is how fearless can he be with himself coming off the bench? Because I don't think he's ever going to be in a position to get a ton of shots off in a game just due to the amount of minutes he's going to get. So, like, how fearless can he be knowing he's not getting a ton of minutes when he's coming off the bench? Kamari McGee. Loved his defense this year. You know, the energy there is did not go unnoticed. His shooting really dropped off as the season went on. And it almost looked to me as if his form changed a little bit. I don't know if that was just me. Um it was, it was something I thought I noticed. And then my question is, it's similar to Isaac Lindsay. Like he, he, can, he showed he can help us this year. My question is, can he expand the amount he can help us or the role he can play yet, yet with the limited minutes he gets behind Chucky Hepburn? Because I, I don't see Chucky Hepburn ever dropping below 30 minutes a game. So I'm, I'm curious how Kamari me can kind of car- carve out more of a role given that. All right, last couple here. Uh, we got Marcus Ilver. You know, in his limited minutes, I liked his offensive skill set. However, obviously his defensive influence was something that was lacking. And my question, so is, you know, he's shown these flashes of offensive productivity. So the question is, can he improve his kind of overall game and stay on the floor? Because if he can do that, I think we could see some growth. We'll see. Chris Hodges, again, limited minutes, but when he wasn't, I was happy he did not shy away from any physicality. I think his, his, he's, he needs more reps. He needs more fluidity, fluidity and kind of game coordination. 
Um, so my 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 question is like, how much of a gym gym rat can he be from now until the start of next season? Because like I said, he needs reps. Jacoby Neath, similar to Chris Hodges, like when he plays, I appreciate his physicality and his mindset. Unfortunately, the the thing that needs to improve, like it's not even a skill thing. I, he's got to stay healthy. You know, that's also my question. Like, can Jacoby stay healthy? So I think if Jacoby was healthy, he could have been huge for us this year. All right, pausing for a water break. All right. One thing I'll say before we get to some portal news is kind of the question or the thought, like, is there anything I'm not worried about for next year or anything I don't think needs an absolute overhaul or a huge update? And yes, yes, there are. The first is like, quote unquote, the offense. This is something I could probably rant about for a whole episode. And I'll start by just saying, if you watch Wisconsin and still think we run the swing, I don't know what to tell you. I don't, because we don't run it. There's tiny elements that will run sometimes like, ooh, that's involved in the swing, but that's it. But we don't run the swing, okay? Guard lets the guys play with far more freedom than Bull Ryan ever did. Also, pace of play is not like this causated variable with the amount of wins you get or success, or success you have. All right. And when guard has the pieces, Wisconsin does pick up the pace. Last year with Johnny Davis, at one point in the season before guys started getting injured a bit, we were top 200 in pace of play. That is wild compared to what Wisconsin has been. So I don't, I don't know. I don't want to hear it. The next thing is people often say, you know, we need more athletes at Wisconsin, which to be fair, like if you were to ask me, Hey, like, would you want a more athletic team? I would say, yeah, sure. Who doesn't? However, Wisconsin has shown for two decades, essentially, we don't need these unbelievable athletes to win. Now, when we get a Johnny Davis and Alondo Tucker, a Devin Harris, even someone like, well, Frank Kaminsky wasn't this freak athlete. He was fluid and athletic in general as a seven footer. Similar argument can be made for Sam Decker at his position. Okay. Now, when we get those plus athletes, those three guys I listed, they're game changers. They all went to the NBA. But do we quote unquote need this like top freak athlete to like compete in the Big Ten? I would say no. And then lastly is just coaching in general, which I also want to give this this statement for this topic like the time of day, but here we are anyway. So I think like UW has changed since Bo Ryan left. And I think guard is trying to move the program towards a more offensive style of play, which wouldn't be inviting these more athletic players, which people want, which I have said, we don't need. But like I said, if you were to say, will do you want these guys? I would of course say yes. So having said that, we can't just snap our fingers and want the system because if you run a system with the players that can't run it yet, like you're going to have a bad time. Okay, so that transition isn't going to take a year. I do think we're moving toward that way. I will also say players still improve under Greg Gard, just as they did under Bill Ryan. Sometimes he will make the argument players don't improve anymore. And again, just like people saying we still run the swing, I don't know how to respond to that without either insulting the person or like being mean. So I'm just like, I don't know what to say. And I've mentioned picky recruiting. And we'll get to this more in a little bit. There is evidence that's changing. So we'll see. All right. Now, having said all that, do I think everything that I previously listed, those three factors, do, do I think it could improve in some areas? Yeah, of course. Is it the cause for all the struggles we have? Like, I, I don't buy that. So those are kind of my postseason reflections. Now, some people might say, you know, you listen to some players that might transfer. Like, I didn't list Jordan Davis because he transferred. Tough to see him go. Um I'll say more of this later. I don't want to speculate on someone who might leave when they're still on the team. That doesn't seem right for me who I don't have an inside source. It's not like I'm like calling or texting these guys. So as far as we know, I got them back. All right. So for the transfer portal, my immediate questions or I guess reminders I want to give some folks is one is that the transfer portal recruiting is harder, <clears throat> excuse me, than regular recruiting. You know, so this, this, if you just kind of hang with me for a second, like, do we want do we want to wait for the ideal or best player, or do we take the first player who would be a good fit and help us? Okay. Now you could say, well, that's the same 
something that exists in regular recruiting. Yeah, yeah you're right. However, transfer portal recruiting is a span of like two months. And with the NIL, NIL factor being in there, which is a much bigger deal, because like I said, shorter time frame, like this is just, it's hard. All right. And also coaches fully don't know who's going to be in the portal until they're in. Like some people definitely tamper. And we'll get to that in a second. I don't think Wisconsin does. Okay. So like an example with the whole timing factor. Last year when Max Klesmet was entering the, entered the transfer portal, he eventually released like a top four, a top five, top three. I don't remember exactly what it was, but UW wasn't in it. They weren't in it. At the time, UW was tra- was looking at some other players. Those players didn't work out. Max hadn't committed to a school yet. They they could reach out to him, had a visit, done deal. So essentially, it was it. I've I've been essentially told that he was like a quote unquote wait and see situation. Now that worked out, but that's kind of like the picky recruiting I mentioned in the past, somewhat. And I I wouldn't bank on that always happening. You know, so I think it's just it's such a hard situation because of that shortened time frame. As I mentioned, all this is happening when other teams are, I mean, let's be blunt, illegally in contact with players. And I, it's fair to say, I think it's going on right now. Um, guard prior to the North Texas game was asked a question by Jim Polzine. Or maybe I don't know who asked the question, but Jim Polzine tweeted it. And guard said, quote, stuff's going on that is, quite frankly, sickening in terms of the poaching and tampering and the portal lined up with the NIL. And I think like he didn't say who was contacting players or which players were contacted, but I can't help but think that these are some of the Wisconsin's best players are being contacted. You know, like Tyler Wall may or may not come back for a, for a fifth year. So I'm sure teams are calling him, you know, Chucky Hepburn is probably our best player. Connor Asijan had this great freshman season. I don't, I think it'd be naive to think that none of those guys are being talked to by other schools, which is as guard said, kind of sickening. Speaking of Tyler Wall, we don't know if he's coming back yet. Now, obviously we want him back. I will quickly say there is a, what I'm hoping is a minority of fans who are unfortunately very loud that don't think he should come back. That's delusional. That I'm not giving any more time to. If he does come back, I think our strategy should be for the portal. One, just get the best player we can get. Like don't, who cares what position they play? If he improves our roster, take, excuse me. That's a cue for a water break. As I was saying, just take the best player that we can get regardless of position. Number two, identify front court depth. A talented forward this year would have been humongous for us. And then three, obviously, back court depth, but specifically, Someone that can do some damage off the dribble. Okay. Slashing wing type. Now, if he doesn't come back, I would say switch one, number one, and two. So in other words, first try to get a front court player, then just add depth. Now at this point, I'll remind everyone, if a player is in the portal, it's for a reason. Okay. So this is not a situation where we can say like, oh, we need someone who has proven to be a game changer in this, this, like, let's be real. Like, if they were that good, like they're probably not leaving leaving the port in the first place. Now, there are some players, and we'll get to this in a second, that are pretty big names and are like that, but they are very few and far between. And I don't know if that's the kind of, kind of player that Wisconsin will usually go after or get. So having all said that, I think the question is now, what what do we think our roster might look like next year? You know? Um now, this is what I will say here. There have been names rumored to be soon entering the portal. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't want to speculate or push rumors that are still just rumors. So I'm just going to say this. It appears there might be one to three more players who will enter the portal when it's all said and done. That is in, that is in addition to Jordan Davis. So Jordan Davis plus is one of three would put us at two to four players from this previous year's roster. I will also say there appears to be some optimism Tyler Wall will return. Far from a done deal. That's, I mean, I literally cannot give specifics besides there's some optimism. But just take that for what it's worth. So having said that, 
the question becomes who might fill the one to three open slots that Wisconsin might have. And this is where it's really hard because, you know, you see people tweet out lists like, oh, I've been contacted by the following schools. And if you follow enough people on Twitter, if you go to enough kind of Wisconsin basketball forums, you hear bits and pieces here and there. But oftentimes this is an incomplete picture of what's actually going on. So, but based on what I've seen, it's public and any consistency in, you know, what people say is, you know, who we're looking for, but mostly I got to say is mostly what I've seen that's been like publicly available on Twitter. Um, there seems to be three players that have the most smoke, so to seem for portal additions. I will also remind everyone that with Max Klesman, really didn't have much public connection to Wisconsin until he announced he was going to go to Wisconsin. So feel free to take this with plenty of grains of salt. The first is Noah Reynolds. He's a six foot three guard with two years remaining of why the two years of eligibility remaining from Wyoming, initially from Illinois. So he's kind of, kind of coming home a little bit um, potentially, I guess he, this past year was a second leading scorer for, for Wyoming. He averaged 14.5 a game, while the leader in points averaged 15.6 a game. However, he played about 10 fewer minutes per game, I think due to some concussion issues this year. Um, he had a 33, he shot 33% from three this year. However, he shot 41% his freshman year, um, although he had a much higher usage in the year he shot 33%. This guy's a good but not great athlete, but definitely makes our team more athletic. Um, I just think this is a guy who... I should just say, and this is kind of, I mentioned this earlier, like if there's guys in the portal, it's for a reason. So no Reynolds is a good player. I think he can help us. Um, if you look at some of his like quote, like analytics or advanced stats, some of them aren't fantastic. And I would just say for that, like he's going to go potentially from Wyoming team where he's one of, if not the top dudes, having to take a lot of tough shots, have to do a lot of the work it's coming to Wisconsin. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh, I got, I got plenty of guys around me that can fill in some holes, so to speak, and I don't have to be putting so much on my back. So just keep that in mind. We're looking at advanced statistics. I think some people view that as like the end all be all, but, and I love analytics and statistics, math major, math teacher, but we also need to take context into this. The second name is Rink Mast. And if that name sounds familiar, I hope it does because he is a six foot nine forward from Bradley. Well, I, I'll say he has one plus years remaining because I think he could technically still take a COVID season, but I have no idea if that would be in play if he came to Wisconsin. He led the team in scoring rebounds and he was second in assists. He shot 33% from three for his career. However, last season he shot 35% and he has a pretty good usage. Like it's not like he was only taking a couple shots. He was taking two or three a game um, and he would definitely make us more physical. You know, this, this is, this is a guy, I think if there's any one player on this list I'm going to go over, this might be the person who, if he was on our team this past season, might have had the biggest impact. And then last is Marcus Domask. Domask? I should not know how to pronounce his last name. Um, if that name sounds familiar, he's initially from Waupon, Wisconsin. Uh, he's a six foot six inch wing slash forward with a year remaining from uh, Southern Illinois University. He led their team in scoring, rebounding, and assists and shot just under 35% from three. This is one I'm cautiously optimistic yet also unsure about because I, I don't know if a player who was kind of as big of a – what I'm looking for. Like he was a huge part of their team at SIU. Like I said, led the team in scoring rebounds assists. Um, but I can't help but think, especially if Wall comes back, that this would be a guy who would come off the bench unless if he would earn one of those spots that Connor and Max currently has. But again – this is, this is so well past speculation here. Um, but the thing that makes you a little optimistic is he was at UW's NIT game versus North Texas. It's my knowledge. He's not like friends or buddies with anyone on the team. So I take that for what it's worth. It might be nothing. So anyway, um, so for those three players, the questions I would ask, offer anyone to think about is do any of these players – make us more athletic? Do they make us more competitive? Do they make us more physical? And honestly, like it's yes for all three. They all, all three of us, excuse me, all three of those players would improve all those metrics. They would make our roster more competitive. They make us better. 
So the earlier kind of mindset I mentioned, like, does this player make us better? Like it's yes. So if, if those guys want to come to Wisconsin, I say, don't wait for someone better. Take them. Just my opinion. All right. And a couple of names I'll just mention because they have some sort of ties or connections to Wisconsin. However, I have not noticed as much smoke with them is uh, Andrew Rohde, who I mentioned in a previous podcast. He's a transfer from St. Thomas, Minnesota. Um, supposedly, he's been getting a lot of uh, interest from a lot of schools. Next would be Hunter Salas. Uh, he's a transfer from Gonzaga, from Nebraska, friends of Chucky Hepburn. I've, I've heard Wisconsin's interested, but that's I'm sure they're interested in a lot of guys. Uh, one player that I was surprised about is AJ store kind of a six foot six wing guard from St. John's that Wisconsin reached out again. All I know is that we reached out. He would be someone I, I would be very, very intrigued with. He's someone that could really help us. And this is just something I saw today. Uh, this guy, steel venters. He's a uh, East out of Eastern Washington, kind of a wing slash guard, like six, seven, very good shooter. It, it's, just again, like I said, it's kind of later in the process. We're still talking to players. We've talked to him. So for I would, I guess, keep an eye out. All right. So to kind of kind of finish this this episode here, I got a couple other things I'll just kind of mention. You know, a weakness I've said of guards in respect to recruiting is I think he can be a little too picky. And I get an over over connection, excuse me, over correction sense. You know, like you you want to have players obviously that fit culture-wise, skill-wise. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So you want to kind of swing in a direction of we want to be really selective and we want to avoid situations where the locker room, so to speak, wouldn't be what it wanted to be, both talent wise and culture wise. But if you kind of overcorrect too far, as we see this year, we don't have enough talent on the roster because, like in general, do I want a coaching staff to be picky with who they offer scholarships to? Like I would argue, yes, yes, you do. But like I said, this year was a great example of how that can backfire. You know, we had a t- top five that was really pretty good, but our whole roster didn't have enough talent. And there have been guys in the past that like probably could have made us better. Um, but whatever the reason were, it was, they weren't a perfect fit. So we didn't, they didn't get a, a, a shot. I would argue what I'm saying right now is, is very picky in my end. I just think it's a, a topic that's worth, worth discussion. So like, how optimistic am I that UW can alter the recruiting strategy, I guess, specifically in the portal, or I guess in general, really? Um, well, based on guards' previous comments that we, uh, there was after one game, I forgot who asked him the question, but his answer was something along the lines of like, you know, we need to be more athletic, physical, experienced, and we got to do it in the portal. You know, he, guards not naive. And it really wasn't a question that was talking about the portal. We brought this up. So that, that kind of raised my eyebrows. And then from last week, um, I forgot who tweeted this out, but guard said, quote, I mean, I'm in Minneapolis last night watching our guys that are in the state tournament and we're active in the portal. We've got a visit going on right now and we're preparing to play and before they play North Texas um, and you're navigating all that. So I'm impressed that they're getting this done. I'm also intrigued who was on that visit. So I'm, I think there's evidence that they're kind of going in the right way. Okay, I'm pretty confident of that. Now, at some point, not always, but there's got to be a line. The question has to be, will the player make us better? Or can they slash are they better than who we have on our roster right now? If so, like offer the guy, you know, now where's that line? Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm not a recruiting expert. I'm not about to say I know more than Greg Gard because I don't. Um, but I, th- I think it's fair to say that Greg Gard and the coaching staff are currently kind of readjusting where I want that line, where they want that line to be. And I think the last thing I'll say real quick, just because I've seen some people voice, voice this opinion. I kind of roll my eyes is, is that they want the big name transfer. I don't know if that's, if that's really like realistic because I'm talking like a hundred Dickinson, Dickinson, Kirk Carissa, Jameer Nelson, Jr. Caleb Love type transfer. Um, Maybe even guys I listened to earlier, Hunter Salas and AJ Store might be two bigger names. Like, like I don't know if we're ever gonna get a guy like that. One, because I think guys like that they want to come to a school and immediately be quote unquote the guy. Not that we're like too good for that, but Wisconsin definitely wants to build their players up. So if we're looking to develop guys, and then uh, just say like, oh, uh, we're gonna bring this guy in, 
who has not been here the last couple of years and we're going to take your spot. That's not really how UW builds it up. And also like those guys usually want big NIL paydays, right? Now it does seem like our NIL is more organized for this year than it was last year. And they're kind of ready to go. Now that doesn't say a ton because last year it was a major bummer, especially with the portal. Um, but that doesn't like, I guess like I said, the question is like, should we even spend time on these like big name guys? Should we tr try to spend time making a huge strike? So I would say for right now, I would say, no, I would say, I wouldn't even waste my time with that, with that. I think Greg Gard is fantastic at evaluating high school talent. And I think we'll have better chances hitting it big there and having that really help our team than the transfer portal. Just my opinion. For now, as I mentioned, we can close a guy who will make our roster more athletic, competitive, better. Like, do that. Snag him and move on, okay? That's That sounded like a rant, but it wasn't meant to be a rant. All right. And the absolute last thing, um, a player out of Grafton, Wisconsin, a 2025 combo guard Juan Guerrero Hernandez Jr. was recently selected to Mexico's U-17 national team which is super cool. I think the last time Wisconsin had a player play on a national team of any kind of level was Johnny Davis, obviously. And before that, was there, what was the last time? Did Bronson Koenig play with? I don't know. I'm pretty sure Sam Decker did. But it's not very common. So I think that's really cool. They're from the state of Wisconsin. Um, and as of right now, we haven't offered one. However, I've I've heard supposedly Sharif Chambliss is in contact with him. So, you know, right now we only have two scholarships over 2025 with Kai Rogers and uh, Davion Hanna, but that, that could be a nice third option if that works out. All right. That'll be over tonight. Hope everyone had a great weekend. Hope everyone enjoys tomorrow. Actually, tomorrow is the national championship for the men's team, but by the time this is posted, it'll only be 20, a little bit less than 24 hours before the game starts. So if you don't watch this before, for that game. Hope it was a good one. Um, but yeah, hope everyone has a great night. Bye, everyone.